Let's imagine you're in a physics class. The teacher has drawn on the board two cars, one with a big arrow and the other car with a little arrow, signifying the velocity. The car is slowing down. Now, the teacher looks out to the class and asks, what is causing the car to slow down? Fred, what do you think? Fred thinks for a moment and replies, the brakes maybe? Okay, hmm, um, how about Sally? Sally replies, does the weight of the car slow it down? Interesting, interesting. Um, uh, how about you, Jose? You might know. Jose jumps from his seat and he screams, friction! Yes, yes, did everyone hear that class? Friction slows down the car. What's happened here? In this familiar scene, the only answer that was valued was the one that was correct. The other students' thinking and courage was not valued at all. Furthermore, Fred's answer could have been correct, but it went outside of the teacher's framing of the question, so they dismissed it. Sally's answer could have had some interesting student thinking if the teacher wanted to probe more. After all, the weight is relevant to the frictional force. Do you think Fred and Sally might be discouraged and therefore reluctant to participate in the future? The way we ask questions in the classroom matters. In general, questions can be categorized as either open or closed. Open questions are divergent. They have multiple answers and they facilitate conversation. They're excellent questions for bringing out student ideas. Closed questions are convergent. They have only one answer, and they end conversation. They have their place in the classroom, of course, but use them carefully. Let's look at a few examples. First, imagine you're in an astronomy class discussing the distance between the Earth and the Sun. You could ask, what is the distance between the Earth and the Sun? This question won't facilitate any discussion, and you'll have a hard time getting any interesting ideas out of your students. The answer is a fact. The students can succeed by simply recalling the fact. What happens if you change this question to an open question? How do you think scientists figured out the distance between the Earth and the Sun? That's a question that will provoke discussion and you'll probably be surprised by the depth of thought your students articulate. You'll learn how students think about science fundamentally instead of whether or not they remembered a fact. Here's another excellent example from a calculus class. A function is drawn on the board. The area under the curve is highlighted. The teacher asks, what is the fundamental theorem of calculus? How do I, the student, get this question right? by knowing and reciting the fact. Again, let's change it up. In what ways do you think calculus could be thought of as the study of how things change? There's a lot of ways to answer this question, and you can learn a lot about what your students are thinking as opposed only to what they know. Remember, understanding is the integration of knowing, doing, and thinking. Open questions give us a window into the thinking. Of course, both types of questions have their place in the STEM classroom. But as the teacher, the way you handle how knowledge is constructed or taken from authority in the classroom will largely determine how your students view the nature of math and science knowledge. Constantly asking closed questions can lead students to view science and math as sets of facts to be learned from authorities and memorized. Constantly asking open questions can lead students to view science as a process in which they can participate. You can learn more about promoting good scientific thinking in your classroom from my book, Teaching Science Thinking. Click the link in the description to learn more about this book.